Thank you for clicking on this video. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you don't know me, I'm Patty Eminger. You may know me from TikTok as Patty Pop Culture, but now I've decided to just make YouTube videos because why not? Anyone can hop on the internet and think they're not a loser, like Jack Harlow said. So that's what I'm doing, hopping on the internet to not feel like a loser. Today, we're going to talk about the girls that we grew up with, the people that we have known since they were seven years old, dancing with Barney's big purple ass. We have a long-term relationship with these women, longer term than most people in Hollywood have, actually. We grew up with them, and I think that just makes us have a really strong bond with them and why we love them so much, maybe more than other artists. And that, what I'm talking about, is, of course, the x ax. If you don't know what the x axes are, I'm not talking about like the axes, like the x axis that no one really gives a shit about in geometry. I still don't know which one's which, which horizontal, which vertical, I don't know. I'm talking about the x ax that were on Disney Channel and Nickelodeon, the iconic Demi Lovato, Miley Cyrus, Selena Gomez, and Ariana Grande. There's some more XX these days, like Olivia Rodrigo's really representing for a Gen Z XX. They were slacking really hard. Dove Cameron's coming in up the rear. Up the rear. We're going to rank the XX best to worst. Worst to best. Of course, we're starting with the worst. We're going to put them on blast first. And we're going to rank their best songs and their worst songs. So we're really going over everything XX today. And let's just get right into it. We're, we're, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start with the worst X act and go into the best X act out of these four. Demi, Miley, Ariana, Selena. This probably doesn't come as a surprise to most people, but I'm unfortunately going to put the present Demi Lovato number four. I'm about to beat this bitch up. I'm so sorry, Demi. Demi is good for her age. <laughs> what do you think of Demi Lovato? She's pretty good for her age. <laughs> I just think Demi is inconsistent. I feel like Demi doesn't really have a branded sound. She gets called out for hopping on trends in music and in other parts of life, hopping on trends. So overall, I just feel like her music doesn't always feel super personal to her. She kind of shits on her old albums and songs a lot and it kind of just makes the fans feel like why do we love these songs if you don't love these songs and her whole brand image is just so jumbled all over the place so that's why I'm gonna put her last also I just really don't like listen to her music as much as the others but honestly we cannot deny her voice Demi has undeniably one of the best voices in the industry and when Demi does deliver and she really delivers those hard cuts that are so personal to her and you can just tell how personal they are to her and they resonate so much with us, that's when Demi really shines and that's why we love her and that's why we keep coming back to her through the ups and the downs and whatever. We just love Demi, but I'm gonna start with her worst. On Demi Lovato's worst song, th this isn't even my opinion by the way, I'm like a pop culture professional. I've like studied this, dissected this, wrote up a lab report about it. Demi's worst song comes from her era that actually her best song also comes from. It's from the whole, I think it was a self-titled album where she's like covered in black paint like yeah she had a really good start with that heart attack but then there was this other string of singles i think made in the usa or something trying to copy miley neon lights trying to copy selena and really don't care oh my god was Cher lloyd hey demi you picked the wrong lover you should have picked that one he's cuter than the other so bad that's her worst song ever really don't care I don't really care for it. It's the, her worst song ever. I can't even stomach it. Those three singles just seemed so misled, so not Demi. When Demi talks about how she was forced to be this pop girl back in the day, I think she's talking about that era, how she didn't really like the music at all. It all just seemed so fake, forced, and anyone could have sang it. They just put it in Demi's... They just put Demi's voice on it, and unfortunately, Demi has to now live with those. Her most successful song is Sorry Not Sorry, but that is not my favorite Demi song. Even Sorry Not Sorry seemed a little bit forced by Demi. Whenever she would perform that song, I swear, she was just not feeling it. I don't I don't know. She just seems so mad while singing Sorry Not Sorry. Like she's like forced to dance on stage. I don't know. But her best songs, I'm I'm gonna say three of each of these girls. Her three best, 29, from the newest album. Demi's still making bops to this day. 29 because I've 
it just really resonates with me. First, it's an amazing song. Duh, it's such a honest story for her with her whole experience with Wilmer Val Valderrama. That creep, he's just as creepy as his character on that 70s show. Who even knew how creepy he was? Why do all the hot men like Army Hammer have to be such creeps? He was creepy. But it's a surprisingly relatable song for so many people. It seems a lot of people, even in my friend group and that I know, have just dated a 29-year-old who just fucking sucks. What is wrong with 29-year-olds out there? I thought the worst age was 27 or 23. What's a song nobody likes you when you're 23? Apparently 29-year-olds fucking suck. I've been with one too many 29-year-olds as well. A lot of those 29-year-olds were awful and such flops. And it was just not the best experience. So I just really love this song. That's one of them. Heart Attack is another one in the top three. Literally defined a generation. Yeah, Heart Attack, so good. Sorry, I'm getting PTSD from thinking about those 29-year-olds. Um, Dancing with the Devil, oh my God. That was such a poetic song and such a perfect song to sum up her experience with almost overdosing. I was, I first heard it, I was like, damn, she really put the whole experience into such a perfect song to represent it. And I was blown away by that. It's like every one of her albums has a gem on it. I'm going to say her best song ever, though, is Heart Attack. It's just such an iconic, legendary song. The bridge, it's one of those songs that I don't even sing along to when it's on the radio because I know I'll just sound like a dying fucking sheep. So it's it's that good. She really shitted on everyone with that song. And because of that, no matter what small business she tries to take down next, we can't really hate her because it's that good. I'm like fully convinced this is going to stop filming at any moment. Okay. You make me love But I cover up, well, let it show All right. Unfortunately, the next woman that I am placing third, so like the second worst ex act, this may surprise you, but I'm going to put Miley Cyrus. Oh no, Miley. Sorry, I put you second to last. What I want to say about Miley, though, is she really has one of the best raw voices. Even from such a young age, those Hannah Montana songs could have been really fucking bad, like JoJo Siwa songs. But just because she's been so talented her whole life, she put her, her Miley sauce in it. And bop after bop, even if they weren't even necessarily good songs, the other side, the other side, the other side of me. She made all those kid teeny bopper little anthems go so fucking hard. And it's just a fact. So one of the best voices. She also invented eras. Eras? Why do I sound like I'm from New York when I'm saying era? I really don't like New York accents, by the way. I think they're just begging for attention. People who are from New York or wherever who say bag, like bag, like bag, they find any excuse to say bag. And I'm so done with people with their New York accent shoving it in our faces. We get it. But yeah, she invented eras. Bangers changed the game for every pop girl. It set the president from 2013 on. You had to change something up. You had to change your hair. You had to have a whole new self-discovery psychotic break every era. And if you didn't, you just weren't keeping up with the best of the best. She also just invented dissociating with her multiple identities. Ashley O, Hannah Montana, Miley Cyrus, RP Hannah Montana. I know she was found dead somewhere. But yeah, love all that. I also love her new post bangers weed smoking voice. I think it's so raspy. A lot of people don't like her new voice. I love it. I think it's better than her old one. It's more raw and I love it raw. It's really sexy. I'm putting her third just because I feel like she tends to disappear sometimes and her music changes so much with all these vastly different eras. It's hard to like get connected to the Miley essence in my opinion. It's I think the two I'm saving for later are more consistent. So that's why I still love Miley so much, though. But it's, like, ever-changing. Like, are, are you going to like the new Miley or are you not? You know, who knows? Her worst song is, unfortunately, from her new album featuring one of the women I love the most, Prisoner. It seems so forced. It seems like she made the Plastic Hearts era, and then her label was like, mm, you need a radio more pop bop, and let's just kind of force it and try to throw Dua Lipa on it, like Sweetest Pie, and it just really didn't work, unfortunately. So... Prisoner is her worst song. Her most successful song, Wrecking Ball. Not my favorite by her, though, but really had a chokehold on all of us. Her best song, I'm Giving Three Again. 
all different eras too, because she's that good. The climb, OG Miley, Teeny Bopper Miley. One of, like every time I hear the climb, it's one of the songs I have to be in a stable mood. It's like before you take Molly or hit weed or something. I have to be in a stable mood before I listen to the climb, or else it could get really bad. You know, you have a good experience listening to the climb or a bad experience listening to the climb. I need a good the climb session. So it's that because it's that powerful. It's that good of a song. So that's one of her best songs for sure. Like Adele and the best balladeers of all time have nothing on that song. One of her other best songs, Can't Be Tamed. That song, mm, I didn't even know anything about SEX before that. After she was in that cage with that leather black outfit, I started my BDSM era. She really corrupted the youth. The parents were right. Our parents were right. She corrupted us with that one. Malibu, one of her also best songs. So later than the other two. I'm going to say her best, though, is The Climb because it's that good. Malibu is just kind of sad because now it's, like, recontextualized because it was supposed to be this happy, like, we're meant to be together. It came back to us. We let our relationship go, but it came back to us, so we're meant to be. No, they weren't, after all. So it's kind of sad listening to Malibu now. The Climbs are best song. Number two. People probably expected this pop diva to be lower on the list. Nah. Number two is Miss Selena. You can never count Selena Gomez out. Gotta keep an eye out for Selena, like Nicki Minaj said. And you fucking trolls almost bullied Selena Gomez out of the music industry because you said she was untalented. All of you trolls on the internet. And she almost listened to you guys. Who said, who said, can you tell me who said that? Your own fan, Selena, said that you were unfucking talented and that's why you almost stopped making music. Then she got her Grammy nomination and she's back and you just have to deal with it. She's stomping on the industry and we can't deny that. Selena's voice is so good. I feel like people think she's untalented just because it's not so loud and so attention getting and boisterous, her voice, but her soft tone and how she can take control of that in the studio what she lays down in the booth is her talent is unmatched she just has a studio voice she makes love to the mic when she's in the studio and people really downplay her talent she has such a range too again it's not loud but when she's doing those soft songs she can go high she can go low and she's portraying so much emotion in that range and just how she delivers and i love like the breaths she takes when she sings She's like moaning into the mic. Like I said, she's making love to the mic and those breathy, almost like Marilyn Monroe-y sounds that she makes are so good. And she's one of the best recording artists of all time. Live artists, maybe not, but recording artists, we got to give her respect. Her worst song, unfortunately, I'm going to say is from her Droplet era. And I'm going to say her worst song ever is Fetish. Fetish just didn't really make sense to me. I didn't really like the flow of the song. I find it hard to get through that whole song and the concept seems really bland and boring. You got a fetish for my love. It sounds like someone just heard the word fetish and wanted to write a song about it and it just wasn't exciting. There was no build. There was nothing really exciting about the song after the first chorus. So I'm sorry, fetish. Her most successful song is Lose You To Love Me. But do I think that's in her top three best songs ever? I actually do. I love you. I love Lose You To Love Me. It's like her magnum opus or whatever they say. It's such an important piece of work for her discography because I feel like a lot of her discography when she was back with those weird The Scene boys being the Adam Levine to their Maroon 5. Why was she in that group? I don't know. But her whole discography leading up to Lose You To Love Me was like, I feel like about her struggles with Justin. Same old love. The heart wants what it wants. All of that. And then Lose You To Love Me was like, I'm finally just going to let go of this and realize how much more I mean to myself than this relationship that I've been trying to make work forever. And she portrayed that beautifully. And the song is just like the perfect Selena Gomez song. It's heartfelt. It's emotional. It's warm and makes me want to go by Rare Beauty. Her other two best songs are Good For You, So Sexy, I Want To Conceive My First Child to Good For You, Same Old Love. I love Charlie XCX's obvious cameo on that song that she doesn't get credit for. But Same Old Love is just really a bop too. That whole revival era was the sexy songstress era. These other girls wish they could have. Her best song ever though, her magnum opus, Lose You To Love Me. That's her number one best Lose You To Love Me worst fetish.
All right, I mean, come on. There was really no competition this whole time. The best X act straight from Dan Schneider's feet worshiping community, Ariana Grande. The best X act, there's, there, there's, there's no competition at this point. Like give it up, it's her, she wins, you lose. She is the best voice of this or any generation. One of the best voices. I'm not trying to discount Winnie Houston or Mariah Carey, but definitely this generation of like, you have to put her in the conversation of all time, no matter what. God is a woman and it is Ariana Grande. She's my favorite white woman of color. No matter what race she is, I'm always gonna be there for her. There's really not much I could say to express how much I love Miss Ponytail. She's literally the background on my phone. Me and her made eye contact once, I swear, at her concert and I felt an electric shock go up my body and absolutely rip my spleen and electrify every nerve ending I had. And it was actually the most like high moment I felt, no matter what hard drug I can take, the moment me and Ari Grande made eye contact, boom. I also like can't say her name. I mispronounce her or I slur her name, like Ari Grande, as much as she slurs the songs that she sings. And that's just another thing me and her have in common. We're, we're so similar. Anyway, she bodies the music industry and makes it look easy. Ever since The Way, I'm pretty sure all of her lead singles from every single album since she started have been a Billboard Top 10 hit. Her streaming number is absolutely insane. So many awards, Grammys, you name them, she has it. She really makes it look easy too. It just, it seems like she was just born literally not human. It's almost unfair and I worship her as if she is a god. I would bow to her feet if I got to fully meet her. She raised me. If, if, she, if I didn't have her music, I don't know what, who knows what I would be right now. I'd probably be in prison. Worst, since I'm such an Ariana Grande stan, I want to talk about like non-singles, but we're sticking to singles on this video if you can't tell. Her worst non-singles would definitely be Motive or NASA. I have my own problems with Motive and NASA. I'm sorry if those are your faves for some reason, but those are her worst. Her, but her worst single, I'm going to have to say is a remix because all her singles are literally perfection. Um, her worst single is unfortunately 3435 remix. Yeah. It seemed like another one of those forced things to boost it on the chart a little bit, and it did. But I don't really know why they did that because it was already really high in the chart without them. Maybe they just wanted to extend its life or they didn't really see another single from Positions happening. But they should have went with a ballad from that album to make a single. But yeah, that's her worst. Her most successful song is Seven Rings, has almost two billion streams. Her performance of that at the Grammys, oh my god. I'm, I'm still coming down from that high of watching that performance. It was so good. And I also think that song is in her best three songs of all time, along with, this was really hard for me, and I feel like this list could literally change tomorrow. It probably, I prepared this video yesterday. It's probably already changed since then, but my top three for her, I had to, you know, spread out through the discography. First, Break Free, going back to My Everything. The album that put her on the map. I don't know why she like doesn't acknowledge my everything that much. She really does love Break Free though. And she said that her mom's favorite song is Break Free. So Joan has taste. Break Free, No Tears Left to Cry. I think No Tears Left to Cry is such a unique sounding song, first of all. I've never heard a song that sounds like that sonically. It's so Ariana Grande too. And it's such an Ariana Grande response to what she went through in 2017 and like 2018. Um, I feel like her brand is so unfortunately at this point like going through trauma but still trying to find love and light and the light at the end of the tunnel and that's what that song is to me so it's such a quintessential ariana song then her third best song is seven rings of course that is another quintessential ariana grande song boss bitch pussy stunt shit on the impoverished community and marie antoinette her red bottom louis batons on our neck and not give a shit and i love that song it puts me in my place and reminds me that I should probably go work, get my fucking ass up and work to make money. My favorite underground song of all time. I don't know. Out of these three, it's really every different day. This could change. Today, I'll just say Seven Rings because it's so, like, she really just shitted on us with that one. She broke our necks. She curb stomped us. That's like the quintessential Ariana Grande song. She's not even belting it. She's not even using her voice, but just her aura and why I love her, I feel like it's perfectly wrapped up in that song. So I'm going to say Seven Rings. 
Okay, well, thank you for watching this YouTube video. That is my opinions on what are the best and worst XX and their best and worst songs. I am truly a pop culture fiend. I can discuss this shit all day and all night. You should check out my podcast. If that is also something you're into, Pop Culture University, where we learn about what is going on in pop culture and see what we can learn from it uh, for our own personal lives. We extract cute little life lessons from what's currently going on. It's like a current news podcast kind of thing check out my tiktok if you haven't petty Bub culture anyway subscribe like this video subscribe if i didn't already say that um request i can do this about other artists i can literally do a random four artists next time and i would love to do that so request what artists you would like to see next and if you agree with the best and the worst and if someone ever finds out what nationality Ariana Grande is, please let me know. But until next time, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.